everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we are going to be following up on a video that I did a couple of weeks ago where I talked about how you can make consent more fun. That consent doesn't have to ruin the mood. And there are lots of ways to ask for consent that can be romantic and flirtatious and sexy and lighthearted and are just not necessarily what people stereotype as what asking for consent looks like. And I think there was a lot of really great information in that video. However, a lot of you did very smartly point out that being able to ask for a yes and say yes is only part of the equation. You also have to be able to say no. And that can actually be more difficult and more people might need advice knowing how to say no. So today I am going to focus in on how you can say no and make that process so much easier regardless of if what you are doing is a BDSM scenario or just kinky sex or just vanilla sex. All of that is going to be relevant in today's discussion. And actually, I think before we get into how to say no, I think we first need to start from a place of understanding what our interests are. What is it we would want to say yes to so we can better understand what it is we might want to say no to. Because if you were socialized, especially in a lot of Western countries as a female, as a woman growing up, a lot of us were really taught to ignore our own needs, especially sexually because wanting sex is dirty and wrong and bad and sinful. Just ignore any of those feelings. Only men are supposed to like sex. But also emotionally and relationally we are not expected to very vocally say this is the thing I want because being too bossy is a bad thing being too needy or clingy all of that tends to have negative associations with it and people try to avoid being naggy or asking for too much because it's seen as being counter to being good or being a good girlfriend or being a good partner or a good wife if you are asking for too much or centering your own needs because you are more expected to center the needs and wants of other people. And it doesn't have to be that way. You are allowed to take up space and want things and have your own opinions. That's totally fine. We live in the 21st century or whatever now, right? Like we're kind of past women not being able to have their own desires, right? I hope so anyways. But I think if you are someone that is in that position of really feeling like you are not in touch with your own needs and wants and desires because you've been taught for so long that watching those things and having your own strong feelings about what it is that you want is bad, I think a really good place to start is with fantasies. And you can also be out of touch with your feelings and wants for many other reasons, but I'm using that example. You can start with looking at your fantasies. And not everyone has fantasies, of course, but a lot of people do. And if you don't have fantasies, I am sure there are other forms of media with relationships in them that at some point you have possibly enjoyed. That could be movies, TV shows, books, erotica, whatever else, right? And think about the things in those fantasies that you enjoyed or in those pieces of media that you enjoyed. Did you like a particular part of a dynamic? Did you like the concept of being a captive that is being overcome and tied up? Did you like the concept of like, you know, being taken by a powerful beast or being a loyal maid servant or being a bratty princess? You know, these are some Times, things that we can maybe play with and have role play around and act on, not necessarily to their fullest extent, but in some form. However, I think what we're really trying to look at here is not necessarily just like blanket role play ideas, but like core concepts and things that we could act out on. Like, oh, I like the idea of bondage or being bratty or maybe doing some consensual non-consent or CNC. And identifying those things can make it easier to understand things that maybe you wouldn't want to do because you can also look at those same pieces and go, well, I like this, but I didn't like that. Or this ruined that moment for me. And all that information can just give you more insight into what it is that you might 
find appealing or what you might not find appealing. Although I do want to be clear here for a moment, if you are sharing these fantasies with a partner and talking about them, very important that you know that sharing a fantasy is not consent. It can be a really fun, intimate bonding conversation, but just saying, oh wow, I really love how in this book he transforms into a vampire and then like bites her neck. That doesn't mean that you want to do blood play <laughs> with your boyfriend randomly in the middle of sex. Like just because an idea is shared doesn't mean someone wants to do it in general ever with someone else or right then or with that partner consent has to be obtained explicitly. It cannot be implied because Oval, oh, but she said that she read this book and she thought it was hot. Doesn't necessarily mean that she wants to act out the fantasy in the book. So just to avoid any potential confusion in that area, I would be sure to say up front, like, hey, I'm talking about this because I just simply want you to know about it. Or the alternative is I'm sharing this because I want to see if we can plan to do something like this and maybe try it out at some point. But once you've got a better idea of what it is you would want to say yes to and what it is you are interested in doing, the next step getting into maybe scarier territory is how to actually say the word no and decline things that you are not into doing. And the simplest way to do that is to be able to say the word no. Now in the BDSM community, we do have things like safe words, which allow us to communicate a no using other means. And we will talk about that later, but I do think as a baseline, you should be able to just say the word no. And I get it, that's scary sometimes. I totally know what it's like to be in a scenario where you really want to say no, you mean to say no, and it's on the tip of your tongue and just, it just, it's there and you want to say it and you cannot make your mouth just say the word. And I think in a lot of circumstances, the reason why that happens is you might not even necessarily be aware of it consciously, but there can be a fear associated with saying the word no. You might be afraid of retribution. You might be afraid of being punished or someone breaking up with you or emotionally withdrawing from you because you said no. It doesn't even have to be because of that specific person. It could be way far back in your memory, something else that happened. It could just be an assumption you have because you're not used to saying the word no and seeing other people's reactions. It can come from a lot of different places, but for some reason, there can be a fear around saying the word no. And the best way to solve that issue is by getting comfortable with just saying the word by itself. And this is gonna seem a little bit silly, but I promise it is actually helpful. You have to get comfortable with saying the word no. Just getting the words out there. It's the same kind of practice we do with safe words. You wanna be able to actually do it in a controlled environment just by yourself and have that practice, have that security, so that way you have more assurance that you can do it in a situation where it might be more difficult. So you can literally do something as simple as saying no in the shower, saying it to yourself in the mirror, saying it to yourself in your head first. That's a great starting point. Just saying no, 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 no. Just desensitize yourself kind of in a way to the word, then say it out loud, then repeat it actually back and forth to your partner. It could be a friend. It doesn't have to be the person that you are potentially going to have an intimate interaction with, but just someone else. And this can seem like a weird exercise, but this is something that people do in BDSM dungeons during orientations to help introduce to new people that saying no is a normal thing to do. And in fact, it's actually expected that it will happen. And you literally just pair up with random people and they ask you a random question and then whatever it is, you always say no. And then you do the same thing in reverse and you mix and match a couple times and then saying no doesn't really seem to be as scary. And so through this process, you are really learning that you can say no and you are not zapped by a bolt of lightning. <laughs> you survived, it's okay, it's not as scary as it might have seemed to be earlier. And doing this practice a lot, just kind of doing it 
over time will really help. Now it might not be instant, it's not going to be a quick fix necessarily, but doing it maybe for a couple of days, a couple of weeks on and off can really help kind of break down that stigma you might have internally against saying the word no. Now, of course, I think if you are going to be in a high pressure scenario potentially where you're like, oh my gosh, I might actually have to say the word no because I'm going on a first date or I'm going to negotiate for a BDSM scene with someone, it's good to practice the day of or as like close to before that scenario as you can. So like when you're in the shower getting ready for the date or in the car on the way to the restaurant or in the bathroom when you're there, just really quietly to yourself, whatever you have to do in order to feel confident in your ability to just say no if you have to, that is the thing that I want you guys to be doing because that is going to be so, so, so very helpful. And if you're there and you're with the person and you're like, oh, I'm getting a vibe that if I say no, this might go badly or they might get angry with me, just remember, if this person is getting angry, just saying no to an idea, imagine how they might act in the actual scenario itself. Is that the kind of person you want to be intimately connected to when they react to the word no being said, or they are at least giving off the energy of someone that maybe might not be someone who takes rejection super well. Just remember to tread lightly and really think, is this someone that I would feel safe and comfortable saying no to? And if that answer is no, definitely check in and listen to your gut there. Another great tool that we have for establishing what it is that we do want to do versus what we don't want to do is something called a yes, no, maybe checklist. And I think this is more popular in kink spaces, but they do make versions of this that are both kinky as well as non kinky, depending on what your interests are. And it's a very simple concept. It's literally just in the name. The list is generally a list of activities and words and types of role play, maybe types of clothing, different sex acts, tons of different things that you then go through and you can say, yes, I want to do that. Or maybe depends. Here's some more information or no, don't want to do that. And this can be a really good way of figuring out if you are going to be compatible with someone because just because you are into someone and they seem really cute or just because you're both kinky doesn't mean that your desires actually overlap in any way. So the ideal way to use this, I think, is to literally print out the list, have a physical copy and go through and say yes, no, or maybe to whatever it is that you want. Do it by yourself. I don't recommend doing these live with a partner because I think having the pressure of expectations of like, oh, I think they're gonna want me to say yes to this might alter some of your responses and maybe turn some no's into maybes and such like. So do it by yourself. And then once you have both filled them out, swap them, talk about them, discuss where you have overlaps or don't have overlaps. But I think having it be an independent process will help you give the most honest answers. And it's a really great way to have some conversations about what it is that you do want to do together without, I think, some of the pitfalls with having to guess about like, is this going to be on the table or is asking about this okay? Because the list helps to facilitate those conversations. All right, so we have figured out some things that we want to say yes to and some things we maybe want to say no to. We have practiced saying no and we have gone through a yes, no, maybe checklist. Now it is time for the final boss of learning how to say no, which is how do you say no in the moment when something is happening? So. There is a model of consent that I really, really love, which is the fries model. And in this model, consent should be both freely given as well as revocable, which means you should be able to say no at any time during the process of doing something. Just because you say no once doesn't mean you say no forever. Just because you say yes once doesn't mean you say yes for forever. It is something that is specific to the interaction. Saying no is something that can happen at any point in the process. And this is something I think you should really, really, really take to heart because in the moment, it can be difficult to say no because you might be thinking, well, I said yes so far and just 
sort of think yourself into the position that you have to keep committing to this one thing you've been doing, even if you don't really want to keep doing it. It's okay to say, hey, actually, this isn't working for me anymore. Actually, not really into this thing. Can we try something else? All of that, totally, totally okay. And actually, on that note, I think you can say no and get to the idea of no without necessarily literally saying the word no. Not my favorite solution, but it is one that works. So you can say things like, I'm not really into that right now, or I don't want to do that, or I'm not in the mood for that, or that's not something I'm comfortable doing. Lots of options for sort of getting to a no without literally having to say no. If that word is just tripping you up and you need a good alternative in the moment to say instead. There is another tool that I have previously mentioned, which would be safe words or safe signals. In the BDSM community, the reason we use safe words or safe signals is because when you are doing BDSM activities, it can be very ambiguous about what a no might mean. Because in a role play context, somebody might be saying no, but what they mean is this is so amazing and great and I'm super into the role play and please keep going. So no doesn't necessarily always literally mean no, depending on how it's said and the context and all that. So instead, we have another word, which is a safe word that we say instead. It could literally be safe word, red, any word you want that you pre-negotiate to include in the scene or in the sexual interaction or intimate thing that you happen to be doing. And this is something that you can say that when you say it, it will totally stop the whole scenario. It is basically the fire alarm of the interaction saying, well, okay, this is not going great. Stop, hold the presses. We're not doing this anymore whatsoever. And if someone happens to be gagged or is otherwise able to not verbally communicate or not able to be clearly understood verbally, we can also do a safe signal, which is basically the same thing, but instead of a word, it is like squeezing or tapping or something like that. And I think actually, if you are even having a vanilla interaction, something like a safe word can also be a very good idea to include because like sex involves a lot of really intense emotions and feelings and sometimes, you might not feel like you can say no, and maybe saying red or safe word instead feels a little bit easier. Now, the problem is, is that if you use a safe word, that means stop everything, turn the lights on, leave the theater, not happening anymore. And I think in most interactions, what people need is not necessarily stopping everything and completely not even doing anything else anymore. What they oftentimes need is a particular thing to change. So if your partner says, can I put a blindfold on you? <laughs> that is not a scenario to go safe word, like scream it as loud as possible. Not the scenario for that. You might want to instead do something like a technique that I call, I'm not sure this is like the official term or not, but a denial and a counter. So instead of saying just no, and killing the mood, which can also happen, or saying just a safe word, maybe instead is you say, no, I don't want to do that, but. So, no, I'm not really into wearing a blindfold right now, but I would love it if you, and then whatever it is you would like to do instead. Because if you just say no and <laughs> flat tone, no other information, nothing else, that can definitely make it difficult to continue the scenario. So you can be specific about what it is you are saying no to and include something you maybe want to say yes to instead. That can be a great way to keep everything going. Now, even if you don't necessarily have something you want to add on at this point, you can also encourage them to keep doing something they were already doing. Like, no, I'm not really into blindfolds right now, but I would love it if you would keep kissing me. So that can be a better way to communicate and also kind of, I think also help your partner not feel like a bad person. <laughs> Cause I think there can also be guilt there with, oh, if I say no, they're gonna feel guilty and bad. No, just remove any of that. Or <laughs> sometimes you might be tempted to fill the silence that comes after you say no with, I'm sorry, I apologize, I'm sorry, I'm not into this and blah, blah, blah. No, you do not have to apologize for your boundaries and preferences. They are allowed to be whatever they are. It's totally fine. 
might want to have something else you can say instead so your brain doesn't default to that like i'm sorry no blah blah blah, blah mode not helpful not good for you not good for the interaction let's try maybe a different approach of course, everything I have talked about so far, maybe with the exception of safe words, does require having a more blunt style of communication, being really direct, being very egalitarian in your approach. And if you are in a BDSM relationship, if you are doing power exchange, that might not necessarily work. And a lot of people think that like, oh, if you're a submissive, you can never say no, or submissives are never allowed to deny what their master wants or whatever the fuck. That's not true. Some relationships on the very, very far end of things maybe have a different way of going about stuff, but in general, as a submissive, you should still be able to say no. But the way you say it maybe might be a little bit different because if you were in a dynamic, maybe <laughs> you wouldn't say like, just, no, I don't want to do that because <laughs> that might come across as like bratting when you don't intend to brat. So what you can say instead is, that is not something your submissive would enjoy doing right now. Is there something else that your submissive can do to please you instead? Or, no ma'am, that's not something I can do right now. How else might I be able to serve you? Something that communicates you don't want to do something, but also says, hey, I still want to serve you. I still want to be your submissive. I still want to be your insert title here. How else can we make this work together? And it still puts your partner in that position of authority where they can dictate maybe some things that can happen instead, but you're clearly communicating that is not something I want to do, but let's work together to find something else that we can do instead. So it's that building and that positivity layered in with that saying no. Another situation that might happen is maybe they try to ask you to do something that is outside of your predefined boundaries. That can be something where it is literally an innocent mistake. They don't remember it's a boundary, especially when you are new together and there's so many pieces to remember. Maybe they just need to be reminded, hey, this is a boundary. But if they do it a lot over and over and over again in a way that's like pushing at the boundary, like it shouldn't be a boundary, Eh, not okay. Boundaries get to be boundaries. If they were not okay with you having that boundary in a relationship with them, they should not have said that they were okay with the boundary when initiating the relationship. <laughs> like, you don't get to retroactively be like, actually, I don't want you to have that boundary. Not how this works. Not a thing. But again, it can just be something that is an innocent mistake that simply requires somebody being reminded of something. Now, if you are being asked if you want something, really simple. You can say, no, thank you, daddy, or no, ma'am. Very simple, very direct, but still polite and still remembering those titles and having a way to talk in a way that reinforces that power exchange. So there are lots of options for remembering to be able to say no while still maintaining your power exchange dynamic. Also one final tip, if you really wanna make sure that you're saying no or response is not being taken as being bratty or trying to top from the bottom or what have you, remember your body language, remember your posture. It's very different to like have your hands on your hips and be like, mm, no, actually, I don't think so, daddy, versus like kneeling on the floor and having downcast eyes and saying, no, daddy, that's not something I can do right now. Like having a low, calm voice, speaking respectfully, and having that total alignment between your posture and the words you're saying, that can help remove potential ambiguity, especially if your dynamic does involve some degree of bratting or sassiness. So that is all of the tips that I have for you all today. I try to keep it kind of short and to the point just because I don't want to like overload this with too much information, but I do hope that this video was helpful. And I would love to know what you all think in a comment down below. Was this helpful? How have you gotten more used to saying no? All that stuff I would love to hear 
in a comment down below once again. If you did enjoy this, if you want to make sure to not miss out on any of my other videos, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related subjects. And finally, if you want to support what I do, the best way you can do that is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support me over there, thank you so, so much. That means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.